At John Sharp's request, all his pauses, erms and ums have been left in. Because Glenn usually edits out all his pauses, erms and ums, I told him to leave them in for just this episode so everyone can hear how stupid he really sounds. I am an artificial intelligence using a voice that sounds familiar. First, we come for your movie stars. Next, we come for your movies. Welcome to Humans vs. AI the Movie, and today I have our very special guest, John Sharp. Hello, John. Uh, ha- uh, um... Hello, Glenn. <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't think that was going to stump you. The rest of the, the show might be a little bit horrible. So, apart from the, the comedying, you've uh, headlining for us tonight. You've headlined for us uh, multiple times. Uh, yeah. We love you. Uh, so, what do you do apart from the, the stand-up? Um, I, I sit in coffee shops and uh, look through windows. Excellent. Yeah. Any any particular windows that uh, you'd recommend above any other? Well, it tends to be... Um, am I allowed to advertise on the show? I, I mean, it, you know, we've got no sponsorship or something. You can say what you like. It, it tends to be a, a cafe near a window I'm looking out of. Right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is a, a film podcast. What sort no. of films do you like or not like to see if you're going to be served well this evening? Well, I don't have a television. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... Um, so until recently, um, until recently, I didn't see that. Well, I did a, a while back. I, I did see a number of films. Where, uh, there was a lady I was going out with many years ago, and uh, she liked to see films. And uh, so I saw quite a few films. Okay, good. Any of those that you particularly liked or didn't like, or um, are all films good? Uh, I, I like film noir. I like uh, French films. Um, I'm quite a aficionado of some some of the older Spanish films after the um, uh, after Franco's downfall. Right. Um, the Voice of the Beehive is a particular favourite. I uh, I haven't seen. I've seen some of like the the French New Wave. I was just thinking this of when Nino are and and French. No, I know yeah. you mentioned French earlier, and I said I haven't seen an awful lot of Spanish cinema. Yeah. But um, Pan, up until Pedro Almodovar and stuff um, like that. Pan's lab- Labyrinth. Oh yeah, yeah, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, he's yeah. he's great. Yeah, he's um, and I've seen a bit of Pedro Almodovar. Yeah, as well in uh, Spanish. Yes. 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 With subtitles. It would be very strange to see Antonio Banderas dubbed in a voice that wasn't Antonio Banderas's. Mm-hmm. I remember he was in Atame. Yeah, tie I, me down. Yes, yeah. So that that's that's such a strange movie. All all Pedro Almodovar's movies are a tad strange. Yes. Um, it, the first one, uh, Free Women on the verge of a nervous breakdown. On the verge of a nervous breakdown is. Well, it's known for uh, Rosie Paredes, this, this uh, <laughs> nose, right. nose, the length of her nose. Right. Although her acting was very good as well. <laughs> so there you go. Um, right. So hopefully uh, there'll be some. Um, I, I do ask everyone that comes on, is there a film that you think not enough people have seen? Maybe not your favourite film, but a film that more people should watch. Delicatessen. Oh, I love that. Gina and Caro. Yeah. Have you seen uh, The City of Lost Children? No, I haven't. Oh, it's, I mean, I, I think out of the two, I prefer that. Obviously, I liked yeah. Amelie, where, like, um, right. he, he went, Gino you know, went off on his own. Um, but, like, City of Lost Children, visually, right. fantastic. Cool. Um, right, excellent. So let's go through with what your prompts are. Yeah. Um, the film type, I thought I'd introduce this because we haven't had it before. Uh, and we're in Ealing, and maybe you would know them, maybe you don't. I would say yeah, an I know Ealing, some of them. I an Ealing some, comedy. I know some of the Ealing. Co- I, so I know Lady Killers, um, and I know. Um, There's like Lavender Hill Mall. Yeah, I know and that. Genevieve and some of the yeah, Will Hay that. films. And, and I know some of the Will. Yeah, uh, Will Hay films. So th- that's that's the general yeah, thing. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I that did say Ealing comedy is the film type for the AI. I don't necessarily think it knows what Ealing comedy is. So if you want to be fast enough. and loose with that, you can. Yeah. Uh, the location, which has to feature but doesn't have to have the main action of the film, or it can if you want to, is a double decker bus. Oh, that's that's very um, appropriate. Okay, it's going to get slightly less appropriate. The action sequence. Um, 
and this doesn't have to be at the climax, but it can, it just has to happen throughout, is being stalked by a killer. So it could be Friday the 13th, it could be something, uh, you know, else which is more along the lines of a a suspense. Um, Profession is a gladiator, Mm -hmm. and the random object that has to have a key part in the plot is a tub of coronation chicken. Uh So coronation chicken, gladiator... Stalked by a killer, double-decker bus, Ealing comedy. Right. Okay. So, Are you ready to start? I am. I, can I just say that that's probably two more items because I do have a mild brain injury than I can normally remember, but we'll go with that. That's fine. And, 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 and can I just ask with the uh, coronation chicken, when did the tub of coronation chicken, when did it first... I mean, was it with Queen Elizabeth? The I think it was invented chicken? for her coronation. Ah, it was right. meant to represent the um, the Commonwealth, I think, uh-huh. uh, because at the time India was still um, under the Raj. Oh, it's got paprika in it? Yeah, and I think it's got mild curry and oh, right. eggs and chicken and sultanas Sounds even. completely awful. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, but, you know, it, it seems that it only was for the coronation. It wasn't like uh, her uncle got some um, abdication apricots or anything. Right. Uh, right. So, uh, let's let's start off with... And the, and, and oh. the other thing is, uh, not to be pedantic, but yeah. the, the sort of, it sort of merges together, these five, do they? I, if you see a way that they merge together easily, then that that's fine. Sometimes, but, but all of them are sort of in the... So the concept is that you mention all of them. Yes. During what? I'm going to take you to that ah, now. right. Because yes. we're breaking down the structure of the movie into seven bits. Uh, ah, right. So I'll explain what the seven bits are, right. and then you get to choose what you want to do. Right? Ah. So the first section is the setup. Yeah. Set up. So what is the normal world of your character, and who are they? I haven't actually come up with a character yet. Okay. I mean, it's early days i mean you know i've just finished writing down that uh, you know <laughs> set up a flawed person and tragedy and comedy and then normal world before things change I mean, I, i'm sorry what, i thought i was only doing it for the for the prompts you don't have to, to write down oh no 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 well, well if i don't write it down i won't remember then it then that's so, absolutely fine so absolutely I'm, I'm here to help um okay where do you think you would want to to set it where is this normal world is this the, the well, London. I, I suppose we might as well set it in. Given that we're in Ealing, we might as well set it in uh, Ealing. This, the it's the first time that a, a film has actually been set in Ealing in this podcast. Yeah. So in 1950s Ealing would do fine. Yeah, for that, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, with Ealing comedies, I think with like Genevieve and stuff like that, they started to go into colour, but are we thinking black and white? Or? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I saw them in black and white. Right. Because that's all, we only had the black and white TV. And, and just because other people won't, won't necessarily know, it was just the TV that was black and white. It wasn't just colour came in in 1973 and it was all black and white before then. I remember somebody at my school, I grew up in Norfolk, thinking the whole world, they thought all the whole world was black and white, because all oh, of the right. old TV shows and photos they saw were black and white. Right. And before that, they thought it was sepia. I imagine before that, they thought everything was oil painted. But, um. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> uh, right. Amazing. Right. So yeah. it's, uh, it's London, it's the 1950s. 50s, yeah. Um, so have we got a man, Probably just finished woman? rationing. Yes. Um, well, um, you know... Given that, you know, it's probably easier for me to start with a bloke. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's a bloke, it's the 1950s. How old is he? Is he. Uh, mid. You can think about casting if you want. You can cast 50s, with people at the time. In his 50s. In his 50s. Okay. Early 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so is he. Uh, what, what does he do? Or physically, what sort of type of person is he? Um, Let's just get a, a little bit of grit to build the pearl around. Uh, is he happy? He's a manual labourer. Okay, yeah. excellent. Manual labourer. Yeah. Uh, does he uh, make the manuals for like a um, oh, an Austin Morris? 
cars. Different sort of manual labourer. I was doing a very poor pun. Um, I'm thinking, the thing is, I'm thinking Stanley Holloway. Okay. So, um, um, oh no, make it, I'll tell you what, make it a postman. Okay. Postman. Right, so he is a postman yeah. uh, in Ealing in the, the 1950s, where most of these buildings are stubbardly pro probably still new. I don't know if Eden got hit during the war that much, but... Uh, right. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, there we are. So it's Ealing. It's the 1950s. What's his day-to-day? -day? What's he doing as a postman? Posting letters. Uh, picking up mail. Right. Okay. So it's an Ealing comedy. So have you got any scenes? Is it, you know, the, the sort of standard thing where he's uh, going after a dog or he sees... Terry Thomas coming out and making eyes at the the, the housewives um, across he, the way. He's, he's, well, he he um, there was there was a film with Kathleen Harrison, right, in it. Okay, um, so Kathleen Harrison is his uh, dearly. Uh, I forget what the, this happy breed. Right. Yes. Yeah. Was was the film, and uh, so Kathleen Harrison he would be do do his job come home, have a cup of tea, sit back, watch the TV, talk to his wife. Right. And, and, and so, so is the wife Kathleen Harrison? Or yes, is the, right, the wife okay. is Kathleen Harrison. Okay, excellent. So it's, it's there, he's potting have around. Have you heard of Kathleen Harrison? No, I've heard of this happy breed, right. and I know Stanley Holloway. Um, I, you know, I, I, I've dipped into to black right. and white movies a fair bit, but right. I, I don't have a, I can't, Say, I want to have a and, comprehensive and knowledge. Can I just say that the only blue plaque in Newham where I worked is Stanley Holloway. Right, yeah. great. Um, so that's that's the day to day. Um, what's his flaw then? Like, what's what what's wrong with he's his life? What does he he's, want? He's unambitious. Right. That's his flaw. Okay, yeah. so he's just unambitious. That you know, maybe he's there's like a promotion at work, or it's mentioned, and he hides away that he doesn't want the extra responsibility. He's just happy. He thinks with his little life. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Uh, so that's the uh, the setup for you. Do you want to hear the setup for the AI? Yeah. Yeah. We meet Maximus, a former gladiator who escaped from the Roman Empire and ended up in modern day London. He is confused by the new world but finds a job as a double-decker bus driver. He enjoys driving around the city and meeting different people, but he still misses his family and his homeland. Right. I mean, I guess it's a sort of a setup for a wacky comedy. A, a, a Roman gladiator is now working as a double-decker de bus driver. Right. Doesn't necessarily make that much sense. The AI is strictly doing its job, not necessarily having the, the best imagination, but... Um, so uh, certainly a comedy, I guess, in, ensues if you have a, a gladiator working as a bus driver. Like, um, you know, if somebody gives him a bit of argy-bargy on the bus, does he sort of take out the gladius and shield or the trident and the net? Yeah, oh, yeah, point, point. Yeah, this is it. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I suppose the, the first sort of important question is how you, you you get your shield um and your trident and net into um into uh the seat of um a bus cabin i know um, you know and especially if you break hard you don't want one of those stabbing you or you know big metal shield bunking yeah, you on the back absolutely. of your head i guess the ai comedy scenes at the beginning are, are right in themselves <laughs> yeah Absolutely. Um, so we're going to move on to the next section, which is the complication. 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 Um, and basically, uh, the complication is what sets the whole of the plot of the rest of the movie in motion. We have our... Does our character have a name? Um... Do we want to do Stanley? Because you're picturing Stanley Holloway and then it means no, it's not another no, thing to remember. Um, Maximus will do fine. Okay, excellent. Maxim All right, Maximus. so uh, Maximus the postman. Um, and uh, he is going around his normal world, goes home to his wife, does his post round. Everything is hunky-dory. Oh, well, do his... Stanley, do Stanley. Okay. Yeah, it makes it easier. Um, so something upsets his, his normal world and sets the rest of the plot in motion. Yeah. So... What upsets his happy little life? Um, um, the fact that uh, um, 
if so he's dressed as a gladiator is he no it's up to you oh, uh, right. this is what the ai has done they're parallel things you don't right. have to build on what the ai has done you're right. doing your own right. story right. Just... well if he's dressed as a gladiator well, he doesn't fact... have to be dressed as a gladiator right. well, it's, well, it's well he's dressed decision. as a gladiator he's dressed as a gladiator, gladiator. Yeah. okay so he's dressed as a gladiator, and the problem is is that uh, he's got to do his post round, and because that he's you know obviously he's uh, dressed in heavy metal, this slows him down. So this is the complication. Then he is. I'm going to have to unpack this a little bit. Yeah. He's a postman. Yeah. Everything is normal. Yeah. The complication is he starts dressing as a gladiator. Yeah. Is there a reason behind that? Oh, I see. I see. I see. Um, yeah, because um, he misses his... Um, he's probably making it too complicated, isn't he? That's fine. Complicated is fine. I just want to... As long as there's a logic, it doesn't matter how, how complicated oh, it is. God. It's not as easy as it sounds, is it? Um, I mean, it could be as simple as... We've seen him on a post round earlier, and he's being harassed by all of these dogs. And he, you know, he's going through, and he sees that um, he finds this suit of gladiator armor, and he thinks, well, actually, that might well, protect leave, me from the biting well, right, dogs. Well, leave the gladiator. Then that's to one side. Okay. And uh, we'll we'll go with a pack of dogs. Okay. Or we'll go with the fact that he doesn't like dogs. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this is that he doesn't like dogs, but. Yeah. We're setting the whole plot in motion, a plot that has to have being stalked by a killer, a gladiator, a bus, and a tub of coronation chicken. Right. So what's what's going to set him off on this journey? I mean, and if you want to, we don't have to put the gladiator thing aside. An Ealing comedy where a normal person suddenly decides to protect himself, he's going to dress as a gladiator, and then he starts to actually like that people are paying attention to him, act to him differently. There's some potential in that. Oh, right. Well, yeah, um, I prefer things simple. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, this is going absolutely nowhere, but... Well, it doesn't. It doesn't have to. Not an awful right. lot happens in the Lavender Hill mob, you know. Right, this. true. Um, so uh, oh, we can put this down to sounded like a good idea at the time. <laughs> um, just so, ride that past me one more time. Okay. So it's the we've set up his normal world. Forget yeah. about the AI stuff. You don't have yeah. to worry about that. You just have to yeah. worry about your thing. What's gonna turn his normal world on its head? What's going to shake him out of his happy little life? Um, oh, uh, um, maybe he meets somebody on a bus. Oh right, yeah. Point. Um, his wife threatens to leave him. Okay. Yeah. Because she made a very nice uh, coronation chicken for him, and he didn't like it. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, there we are. No, um, his wife threatened to leave him because he's not ambitious enough. Okay, yeah, that's good, and that sort of ties in with the the character thing. So, um, it's, uh, is the is there an ultimatum then? Is that the complication? It's so, so that his his want his need going forward. If you don't show some ambition in the next month, then I'm off to my mother's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's, that's a, yeah. for an evening co- comedy, that's Next actually a good months. motivation. Yeah. Next couple of months. Yeah. By yeah. my birthday, which is in two months' time. Yeah, yeah. And then that's a, that sort of sets things up nicely for the finale because it yeah. can be at her birthday or whatever. Right. So this normal, nebbish little man, and then suddenly he has to prove that he's uh, actually got some ambition, otherwise his wife is going to leave him. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so do you want to hear the complication for the AI? Yeah, yeah. One day, Maximus picks up a passenger who turns out to be a killer. The killer recognizes Maximus as the gladiator who killed his ancestor in the arena, and vows to take revenge. He secretly plants a bomb on the bus and follows Maximus on his route, waiting for the right moment to detonate it. There's a lot to unpack there in what the AI has done. Not only is there a killer... I think the biggest leap of logic is that there is a killer that recognises an ancient Roman gladiator as the person who killed his ancestor. I think the only things that we've got from Roman times are on coins. So we see a famous enough gladiator that he was on a coin, that the likeness on the coin was so 
goods well, that it no, goes that'll through do to the for common me. day. That, that's fine. I, you know, log, we can throw uh, logic out the window. That sounds perfectly reasonable. Okay, me. absolutely. Yeah, and, and so now he's uh, to kill him rather than just sort of doing it. He's threatening everyone else on the bus. And he's put a bomb on the bus and is also following him around on the bus, working out the best time to detonate it. Maybe he doesn't want to kill other people. Maybe he just wants to, Why to get Maximus. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I gave the AI the same prompts oh, as right. I gave you, right. and this is what it, it's done. It's, a bomb. it's being stalked by a killer. It's because it's trying to, it's, it's the habit of trying to get rid of all of the, the ticks as much as possible. Oh, I see. So it's already got the gladiator. It's got the bus driver. It's got the bomb. Um, you know, we've, uh, see, see. we're nearly there. The logic. Um, so we're moving on to our next section, which yeah. is higher stakes. Higher stakes. So this is where you can have, you know, the refusal of the call when the complication happens. Maybe he doesn't really believe his wife is going to do something, but, um, he decides that he actually does have to to do this, that he does have to prove that he's, you know, got some ambition. Um, so we've got to think about... Um, he steals, uh, he does what every postman in dire straits would do right? and uh, starts opening the envelope. Okay, good. So he's there and he starts opening the envelopes. How, In his mind, how is that going to help him be ambitious? Is that because if he... Suddenly, he has a lot of money, or so he's yeah, flashy. He can yeah, pretend that yeah, he's yeah, working. That you know, um, he thinks. Well, I mean, we don't have to know his motivation. He can just be doing it. I'm just yeah, sort of he, thinking. He, 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 he comes in a bit of money, and he can start buying her flowers and taking her out, and. And that kind of thing. Which is, is, is a quick quick fix. Yeah. But obviously we have these other elements of the plot to work in. You know, you mentioned that you liked Delicatessen before. I, I mentioned Amelie, which is you know, what Cara went on to do afterwards. I mean, part of the conceit there is that she, you know, ends up spying on people and then helping them find their treasures from their, their youth and making them feel joy. It could be that, you know, if we have our killer, if we have the gladiator and sort of stuff like that, if he is illegally opening post, at this point he could find something. Mm -hmm. If you want to go for like a Hitchcock angle, it's like rear window, but like window box letter, I don't know. Right. Or not. Up to you. Well, unfortunately, um, I had the gig and I was due to see rear window, uh, so I've never actually seen rear window uh, and I was due to see that at the local cinema, but there you go. Um, I, I apologise for, for bringing up old pain <laughs> there. Um, but, but you know what I mean? So he has the plan that he's going to go and try to um, at least give the illusion that he's ambitious by nicking some yeah. money yeah. and sort of Stanley's doing that. I think this is probably because it gets real that he, he gets involved in in something and that he has to do it for real. So what does he find in one of these letters then? Um, a check. Okay. And, and so does this relate to any of our, our points? Because we've not had a bus. All right. We've vaguely got an alien comedy at the moment. And right. if you want to shoehorn everything in, in the finale, you can. That's up to you. But to make it a bit easier for yourself, ticking, yeah. ticking off one of these might be a good right. idea. Yeah, yeah. He finds a check. Yeah. Does the check have to do with coronation chicken, a killer, or a? Um... It's it's a check made out to uh, the uh, local bus company. Right. The local bus company um, um, to. Um, so I mean, are we thinking like a comic thing that he opens this check? But for to cash the check, he has to appear to be this person that's quite famous because they've got a large amount of money. So is he then? Is that is that what he's going to do? He's going to try and pretend to be the owner of the bus company so he can oh, cash the check right. and get the money. Lord knows, um, life is so complicated. <laughs> um, yeah, we we still we still got absolutely nowhere. The only thing that I do know uh, about this so far is that. Uh, I will never be a film director. Yeah. So, 
Um, but it's right. I mean, you right. know, if you've got something that you want to work in, right? Right. Work it in. We, I'll, I'll help you work all the, the right. other stuff around so, it. Like, I want you to be infused about this. I am infused about this. I can't tell you. Okay. It's a, a five thirty on a on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> I'm looking out the window. I am infused. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Which is fine, but if there's something that you want to bring in, if what you really like is roller derby, then we'll throw in a roller derby scene. If what you really like is alien movies, then we can have a spaceship flying down um, into Elin. Well, what I'd, I suppose what I'd re- quite like is, um, I quite like a detective in it. Okay. So I quite like a Philip Marlowe detective in so it. So there's, there's, there's a couple of ways that we can go about this. He uncovers, he finds this check. Yeah. And with the check is information that this is the payment to kill this person. And perhaps he's going to show his ambition because he's going to become an amateur detective and try and find out who the letter is from, who it's going to, who's going to be killed and unravel that mystery. That's how he can prove that he's ambitious because on his post round that he can go around, look at the neighbourhood, check out people, and he become the, a postal detective? Um, no. <laughs> well, I suppose, because he, he's a man of limited, even though he, his wife has told him he needs to be more ambitious, he's still got limited ambition. Right. So um, he... Um, I mean, it could be like a crisscross thing. Well, Maybe he on. decides he wants to kill the person himself no, so he can no, get the money. No, So what it is, is um, he he opens a letter. Right. And uh, the letter says that um, if this woman doesn't... Uh, that if this woman leaves uh, her husband right uh, her husband is going to kill her okay um and so when we were on earlier on and you said it was like Stanley Holloway and his his wife and I can't remember the actress's name I do apologize uh, Catherine Harrison so what I thought of was maybe he was single and that he was going around and there this was the woman that he liked but didn't do anything about no, it. No, he, he... I'm only now trying to tie it into your detective thing because right. then well, he I'll, feels I'll like he has to protect no, her. No, 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 no. Um, basically, so basically what happens is, so he comes across this letter. You might have to say that again because when you fiddle around with the mic stand oh, right. it makes a horrible thudding so noise. So he comes across this letter. Yeah. Um you know, having open letters with the hope that he's going to make some money. Right. He comes across this letter and realises that uh, this woman is likely to be murdered. Okay. So, therefore, he's, you know, he's a practical man, so he goes and knocks on the door of the... uh, He can't tell the police, because if he told the police... He'd have to admit he's opening letters. Letters. Right. So he goes to the uh, local um, uh, private investigator and and explains the dilemma he's in. So... He wants to save this woman's life. Okay. uh, But he hasn't met the woman. Right. What's his motive for wanting to save this woman's life? Because basically he's a decent bloke. Right. Okay. Okay, so he's and, found and he's this, doing the right thing. Yeah, so he's got a, a mate down the pub that's a private detective. He goes down and meets him, maybe. No, he 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 he, he lives in Elin, and he knows he on his post round. Right, he walks past this private. This the only sign he's seen of a private detective. Okay, he walks past that most days. Okay, so. He walks in. All right. I'm only trying to say with like the higher stakes is this is where it kinds to get kind of gets personal for him and like there's personal stakes yeah, for him in this. Yeah. But what we do is that we set up as a character based thing that he's a moral yeah, man, yeah. even though he's opening yeah. other people's mail to try and steal money. But you know, yeah, a, a, yeah. a, a grey shaded moral yeah. man at any rate. Because okay. his wife is going to leave him if he doesn't. So. No, right. So it's the, it's the lesser of two evils. So he's yeah. not he's not all bad, but he's not all good either. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. So let's hear what the AI had for their higher stakes. One day, Maximus picks up a passenger who turns out to be a killer. 
The killer recognizes Maximus as the gladiator who killed his ancestor in the arena, and vows to take revenge. He secretly plants a bomb on the bus and follows Maximus on his route, waiting for the right moment to detonate it. Which makes sense, as he's a gladiator from Roman times, move forward to the modern era, who can still, from sound alone, notice that there's a bomb on his bus. Mm-hmm. I don't think the AI's been on many buses in and around London, because if one just started smoking here, people go, oh, engine's got a bit hot again. <laughs> I, uh, I vape, and I had my vape in my pocket when I was on a London bus like, a while ago. And I put my phone in my pocket and it pressed the button. Literally, smoke was billowing out of my pocket on the top of the double-decker bus and nobody said anything. Mm-hmm. Which either just sort of shows how blasé uh, London people are or just that they were wishing for death and hoping, mm-hmm. well, either no. there'll be no problem or it's all over, either is fine with me. Right. Um, so maybe that's, that's, that's how it goes on the bus. Like, you right. know, people just know from bomb smoke rather than vape smoke. Right. Um, so we're now moving on to the next section, which is the dark night of the soul. Right. The dark night of the soul. So this is the part of the, the story where everything seems set against our main character. Everything seems to be lost at this point. The antagonist or the antagonistic force is made known, and it seems that our hero is in really dire straits. We've got to knock him down before we build him back up. Right. So um, his manager right. um, suspects that, uh, or has had complaints that uh, not all the mail is being delivered. Right. Okay, so rather than the killer being the main antagonistic force, the main antagonistic force is the manager. Um, well, it is. We we're talking my character. Yeah, yeah. So at the moment, okay, it, because yeah, the it, the main antagonistic force. Uh, I'm just trying to get a, a logic. So, so if this was like a, a carry on movie, it's mm. almost like the serial killer thing is just one subplot. Mainly, this is like carry on, carry on the buses. Yeah, but in a post office, carry on posting. Yeah, um, and so it's it's his thing. But you've got you've got Stanley Holloway, but then you've got like Sid James as his like detective friend, and then you've got yeah. Kenneth Williams or. Charles Hawtrey is the is the man that's going to kill his his wife. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I just I'm not saying it's wrong. I just want to get it straight in my head. Right. Okay. So at this point, all is low. um, And so is he then fired from his job? And it his wife finds out and says, "Now I'm definitely going to leave you." But yeah, that that, yeah yeah fine. So he he's um, yeah he's. He loses his job. Right. Okay, so he he loses his job. Uh, Do you want to ratchet it up at all? Like in investigating the killer, as the killer now got his, uh, you know, just to break it down as low as he can, but keep it in the plot, has the killer now started to, it seems, stalk him? Or does he think that he's being stalked by this person that he's found? No, but like he's... um it doesn't have to go down too low because no, it's just right. an eating comedy, right? Right. But it's, so um, he's he's walking the streets at night. Yeah. He he he's been chucked out of the house um, by his wife, and uh, although I was thinking about eating comedies, they do get quite dark, right? With the lady killers and you know yeah, all yeah. of the people well, yeah, dying well, in that. Ma- and, ma- maybe they can do in a minute, but at the moment, right? He's he he's been chucked out of the house, right? And um, he, he's he's walking the, the the streets at night. Right. So he's got no job. He's been chucked out of the house. house yeah. He still thinks that this woman is going to be killed. And and as a result yeah. of the fact that he's he's got no job, he he walks into a shop. Right. And steals a tin of coronation chicken. There we go. Yeah. Right. Good. One of the, one of them is ticked off. All right. <laughs> So we've now got it's an Ealing comedy and the tub of coronation chicken which he eats. Oh yeah, and yeah. So he, so he hasn't got the money for the for the bus fare. Right. So he he jumps on a double decker bus. Yeah. Uh, he 
says that uh, um, he walks past the bus driver because he knows him because he, he was a he was a postman. Yeah, and uh, he sits on the top level of the double decker bus and with his Swiss Army knife breaks into his coronation chicken. Okay, yeah, right. Um, so there we are. He's brought low. He's on the on a bus. Maybe he's sort of like hid so that he can sleep in the bus garage in the night or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, so he's there, a hot, show, showed a man, no wife, no home, uh, a, a dinged up ten of coronation chicken is only solace in this dark night yeah, of his soul. Yeah. Okay, so let's hear what the AI had for their section. Maximus decides to stop the bus and evacuate the passengers, but the killer threatens to blow it up if he does. Maximus is trapped in a dilemma. He doesn't want to endanger the lives of innocent people but he also doesn't want to die in an explosion. He feels hopeless and alone, wishing he could go back to his own time. Our main character not wanting to die in an explosion, I think that's fairly relatable. Most people would not want to die in an explosion. We've all yeah, thought there. of that. Um, We've all lived through the IRA, yeah. His gladiator <laughs> skills doesn't really have seem to have come into it at all uh, here. We've still got uh, uh, gladiators um, to come for us. Uh, and being stalked by a killer, because at the moment the killer hasn't made their presence known in our story. Um, just reminding you of the things that we've got to go. So, so we've we've got uh, stalked by a killer. Yep. And um, so you've got stalked by a killer. And a and, gladiator. And, and a gladiator. Well, in terms of being stalked by a killer, um, basically he... So he wakes up one morning... Right uh, on the bus. On so he wakes. No, well, he wakes up one morning. He, he I mean, it could he, be the next morning where he wakes up. Yeah, and he's, he wakes up the next morning. He he goes to the news agent. Right. Uh, he he um and he's buying um another tin of. Uh, is he buying this one? No, or is he trying no, to, right, he's trying right, to shop he goes into it. the news agents. Um, as he goes into the news agents. Um, for his packet of cigarettes. Right. Um, uh, so he'll spend money on the cigarettes. Well, hold on. But hold he, on. he won't he, no, steal the on, coronation hold chicken. Hold okay. on, hold on. All right. Um, he goes into the news agents. He, 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 he tries to make out that he's um, in, so interested in... Uh, so he's going to nick something. Right, fair right? enough. But in... Before he nicks something, he looks at the the newspapers. Sure, yeah. So to make sure that the guy isn't looking yeah. while he while he's doing his his nicking, and he then notices that uh, the big splash headline is "woman murdered." Right. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's move this on to our, our next section then, because we've now got our getting it together section. Getting it together. So this is the point right, of the film yeah, yeah. where our hero comes with a plan of action, right? right. So he sets a goal yeah. and sets out what he's going to do to try and achieve it right. using the skills and friends he's made along the way. Right. It may not work out how he wants to, but he's got to right. give it a go. So he notices that the woman that has been murdered right. is the woman that he read about in the letter that he opened. Right. And um, he thinks that uh, the only thing that he can do is to knock on the door of... So he's not going to go to his detective, mate? Um, Only well, because you said you well, wanted it to be a detective thing. Yeah, well, hold on. Yeah. Right. So before he does anything else... He thinks that the best thing he can do is knock on the door of the house this woman was in. Right. And uh, he he knocks on the door. The bloke, the killer, comes to the door and he he says... So we've still got the finale to come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, yeah. So... No, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. Okay, great. So he knocks on the door and... Uh, he says, you know, is um, that Mr. Smith? And uh, Mr. Smith uh, says... Uh, who's asking? Or who, who's asking? And he says, 
never you mind. Right. And uh, Mr. Smith says, well, I do mind. And, uh, you know, I don't like people that come round, you know, sticking their nose in my business for no reason. Right. So, you know, you you just get off my doorstep. Right. And uh, he does so. Okay. And then, you know, a little while afterwards, he notices that there is a... Sh- every t- everywhere he goes, there is a shadowy figure right. stalking him. So he's identified himself to the killer. Yes. Now. And so he's been... What was his plan of trying to confront the he, person? He, he, was he trying to see if it was all in his mind or was he trying to get well, a, a glance, he, he glimpse of the picture? Well, he just thought it would be the right thing to do. Right. He didn't have a plan. Okay. If he had a plan, you know, he, he was just a man at his wit's end that thought... So now he thinks he's being stalked by a killer and he does need a Well, plan. he is being stalked yeah. by a killer. Okay. Well, we see a shadowy figure. Yeah. I was just sort of saying in the mind of the no, audience, no, we don't quite no, know at Well, the no, he's... he's He's, this shadowy figure is this this man. Right, okay. So he thinks the only thing he can do is um, knock on the door of this private detective. Okay. Yeah. And so he's with the private detective. So this so whole point... The only thing that getting, we're left with... Is the gladiator. Is a gladiator. Yep. Right. But in this section, what we have to come up with is a plan. Right, true. But do we... We still need to mention a gladiator, don't we? Yes. So it makes sense before we, we've... So he goes and sees the private detective. Right. And the private detective is um, uh, believes in... Uh, is a member of a reenactment society. Okay. And uh, this particular reenactment society as a, a one-off on their jubilee, right. are going to reenact um, the... Uh, the fall of Rome or... The fall of Rome. Right. Yeah. And and his job... So the Ro- Roman detectives... Uh, the detective's job is to be a gladiator. Right. In this enactment. He didn't get to play Nero. He didn't no, get to no. play the guy with a fiddle. He just gets to play a gladiator, yeah. which he's not that happy about. Well, no. He, I'm thinking it's still an ealing comedy. I'm trying to think he, of a funny he, little scene. He's fairly happy about it, right. but he, you know, um, he's fairly happy about it because he, he's, you know, he's a detective and he, he finds people, but he's never got to kill anyone. Right. So as a gladiator, he's and at least he wasn't one of the blokes playing the fire, just waving yeah. around with the, the little bit of red card. Yeah. yeah so he's fairly happy. All right. About okay. It. Good. Because yeah, um, it's Ealing, and not a lot happens in Ealing. No, exactly. So. Apart from on the common the reenactments of the fall of Rome, yeah, with uh, with the uh, cardboard sets and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so, okay, there so, still has to be a plan of action right. at this point. If you're going to have the finale being the the confrontation with the, yeah. the killer, or whatever you yeah. want it to be, this is the point at which they they sort of say, right. here's the plan. Yeah, right, got it. Right. What we have is, um, so what it is, is his mate says to him, well, you know, um, it's an overnight thing. We're having an enactment. Yeah. You know, you're homeless. Right. What you can do is um, you can uh, come along and uh, you can be... um, you could sleep in the cardboard amphitheater. We yeah, made. you can sleep in the cardboard amphitheater, right? And and uh, you know, put you up. And there is going to be um, there is going to be a show at you know. There's going to be a show. You can watch the show, or and, or maybe he sort of says, "There's going to be a show. Why don't you be?" A gladiator in the show with me. Yeah, that yeah. way I can yeah. keep my eye on you and protect you. Yeah. And this guy is not going to be able to, yeah. Yeah. to see no, that's you. that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And you'll be in public. Everyone's yeah, yeah. going to be yeah. looking. It's yeah. the safest place to yeah. be. Yeah, yeah. All right. Exactly. So that's his plan of action. Right. Great. Yeah. All right. Do you want to hear what the, uh, the plan of action yeah. was for the AI? Yeah. Together, Maximus finds an unlikely ally in Sally. 
a cheerful waitress who works at a nearby cafe. She sees Maximus in trouble and decides to help him. She brings him a tub of coronation chicken, which she says is her specialty. She also tells him that she is a fan of dealing comedies, and suggests that they use some of their tricks to outsmart the killer. Mm -hmm. So I think the AI may have got a little bit confused on doing it as an Ealing comedy. It's using Ealing comedies now as part of the Ealing comedy. Right. Or maybe that's a meta twist on it's an right. Ealing comedy right. about Ealing comedies using Ealing comedy props. Right. Fair enough. But that doesn't really concern us. It does not. No. Um, so basically, um, so the... Uh, do you want me to say that this is the finale and explain yeah, yeah. what the finale is? Yeah, yeah. Do All that. right, so now it's the finale. Finale. Right. And uh, that means that this is basically our, our climax, our confrontation, if you want one. Um, they're going to try and put their plan in action. It's probably not going to go exactly the way that they want it to. So we have our stage set. We have our cardboard amphitheater. We've got him and his detective mate... Um, dressed in uh, their gladiator garb. Maybe his wife is in the audience, who knows? But uh, what do you think happens in the, in the finale? So we have a man, we have a man, so one of the things is they, they've got a chariot. Right. And uh, um, the, um, the, the, uh, so for some reason, they, so, so it's they, like, they, like like in Ben Hur, where they yeah they've got a chariot right, and um, the uh, the killer mm -hmm. is riding the chariot. Oh, okay. So it has the the killer clocked him, or is the killer part of this society? No. Well, the, the, the yeah, the killer is um, the, the killer. Um, the, pillar, the killer is part of this society. Right. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, um, he's part of this society and... Uh, oh, no, no. Basic, so, basically, the killer murders right. the, the charioteer. Okay, right. So, so, so he murders the charioteer. He, so, he, so, he comes to the thing, he... He's tracking this person down. He sees him out in the open. Yeah. He figures the only way that he can get rid of yep. uh, of Stanley it, is it, that it, if he, he gets onto a chariot yep. and then mows goes Stanley through, down. mows him down, says yep. it was yep. a horrible accident. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he murders the charioteer. Does he sort of like stow the charioteer's body in the chariot so that he can throw him out? No, and then it's it, like they both died in the same it, horrible accident. Under a, um, um, Cardboard taverna. I... <laughs> no, so he he bear, he um, he uh, puts the body. Um, he da digs a shallow grave. Okay, and 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 buries the uh, buries the uh, body of the charioteer on Ealing Common. The only the only reason I was suggesting that he stows the body in the chariot is that he could go mow the person down. As he's killing Stanley, he could then leave. They're both dead. He's covered up the evidence of the earlier murder and moved himself away from the scene of this accident. That was all. Um, it doesn't matter. It's your it's your film. I'm not going to railroad you into it. Well, yeah, he digs a shallow grave. He digs a shallow grave. He puts the bloke in the shallow grave and he wears his charioteer clothes. Right. Okay, so this is this is the, the confrontation. He is in the chariot. He is wearing a he's charioteer's garb. He's on the horse. So he's he's on he's on the horse. Yeah, chariots are being put, the chariots being pulled by the horse. That he's yeah, on, yeah, or is yeah. He just on a horse. Yeah. no, he's on the horse that's pulling the chariot. Okay, yeah. so he's pulling an empty chariot behind him. Well, or oh, aren't. Um, there's, there's, yeah, there's never anything in the chariots, is there? They're in the chariots. What? So you have a team of horses in front of you. They yeah. run. Yeah. And then the person's in yeah. the chariot. Yeah. But you said he was on the horse. Oh, right. No, I, yeah, he's on the chariot. Right, okay, that's he's fine. On the chariot. <laughs> he's on the chariot. No, no, I, I didn't know what you had a plan. Right, there may have been a plan for him yeah, to have the empty he's chariot. He's riding the horses. Yeah. Right, okay. Right. 
So he's right. he's whip cracking. He's yeah. got his team of horses. Yeah. Yeah. He's barreling down towards yeah. these two gladiators. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the finale. This is where it has to get resolved. How mm-hmm. how when they're being faced head on, there he realizes that he's not going to do it. What does no, no. Stanley do to to thwart this killer that's stalking uh, him? Um, he picks up. Uh, do um, gladiators have spears? Some of them do. Usually the, their version of a spear, I seem to remember, was like the, the trident, just because if they are facing off somebody with the sword, they could twist the sword out of their hand with the trident. So, a tri- so you can throw a trident? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. so he throws the trident yeah. at the... Um, at the. Uh, Is he trying to hit him? Yeah, he's trying to hit the killer. Right, yeah. And he he decapitates the the killer. Okay. With the trident. Right. Okay. I that's not. I thought it was going to be something like he was going to throw it through the spokes and then the the killer would would do it. But in front of uh, hundreds of people, including maybe his wife, he yeah. decapitates someone who appears to be just part of the reenactment. Yeah. With mm-hmm. only circumstantial evidence that may end up with him in prison. Um, Pinning this person actually as a killer. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, well, it's hold, gone from. Well, hold on. Hold okay. On a the thing is, he's, <laughs> he's, so he's explained the situation to his fellow gladiator, who's the private detective. Sure. And the private detective, you know, has, has, um, also followed this man. He's followed this because he's... I, I, I knew none of this. Okay, right, that, right. that makes so, a bit more so, sense. So he's followed this man right? because the, um, Stanley has given him the details. So he's also stalked the murderer okay. or, or he's done what private detectives do. Sure, yeah. yeah. And so... Um, I mean, it, the, the, I mean, the, stalk, investigate, they yeah, mean much the same thing. The thing is, the thing is, is that you know the trail has gone cold. Okay. This this uh, man that the private investigator was investigating right. has disappeared. They you know right. as far as they're aware he's disappeared. They don't they don't know where. So does he have evidence? He just can't track down the man. Or has the trail gone cold, as in that they have no evidence and his mates just decapitated him in front of no, hundreds well, of witnesses? He, he knows that this... He's, he's, he's got the letter. I mean, we can, we can have threat. a grim ending, like Kind no, Hearts he, and Coronet he, ends he, up with Louis the, in the, the prison. Okay, he's got he's the got letter. Okay, he's got the letter. He's got the letter. So right. they've got the letter okay. where he's saying... Where this bloke is saying, if you, if, you know, if you leave me, I will kill you. I mean, we can have it as something, a, a very dark comic thing. Ealing Comedies did do that. Maybe at that point, he's been decapitated and there's a scream from the crowd and his wife runs up to him and he's got it all wrong. He's just decapitated someone for entirely the wrong reasons. <laughs> no, well, and then and and re- the end, his, wife, his wife says, you don't have any ambition. And he says, yes, I'm the most famous murderer in England. Right. So <laughs> how long have we got left? I mean, as long as you want. We, right. I've got about a quarter of an hour before I need to start setting things up. Right. So, um, so I think we need to sort of um, run through things a bit. Okay. Just to, so... I mean, he's run through this guy with a trident. What else well, do we need yeah, to run hold through? Hold on. We have, right. He hasn't run through the guy with the trident yet. So... Okay, so we, we're rewinding. We're re- rewinding. The, the, the killer is in the chariot... He's no, heading the down. the killer has disappeared. Right. So we're at the point that... Um, what's so happened? we're going back. There's the, no shallow grave. There's no yeah. chariot theft. We're still back to the original right. plan. He's there with his mate, hiding in plain sight of everyone so the killer's not going to get to him. Right. right. So his mate, the private detective, yep. they know that this bloke is potentially a killer. Yes. And um, he and they know they know who he is because he or the the private detective knows who he is because he's part of the same society. 
Okay, yes. And um, so he is part of the society now. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't before. I'm I was just checking. Not? No. Right. I did ask Izzy, and then you said, no, he kills somebody in right. order to oh, pose right. as someone. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, right. Yeah, point, point. Yeah, right. But no. we've gone back before that now. So, but we and we're changing that. No, so he no, is a member of society of the no, society of the detective. He, say he, he can be. It's it's up to you. <sighs> so, well, say right. He is a member of the society. Good. Right. Right. Yeah. He is a member of the society. Yep. And uh, but he's disappeared. Right. Yes. So they've not gonna, seen him. Right. He was going to be a gladiator. Yes. So they have a spare gladiator's costume. So the, the costume that he's wearing is the supposed killer's costume because yeah, he's gone absent. Yeah, yeah right. he's gone absent. And um, so uh, so the killer knows that these two are going to be at this enactment. Right. Right? Or he knows that one of them is going to be at the enactment. So, I mean, he, he's been stalking him, so he'd have yeah. seen him... Yeah. With yeah. the friend. Yeah. He's know the friend is going to be there. He doesn't necessarily know what their plan is, but yeah. he knows that if he can get to the detective, he can probably get to the bloke. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, uh, and, and then he arrives, you know, and sees the opportunity, which is... Um, the op- his opportunity is to kill, kill the... You know, he sees his opportunity... Seizes the opportunity of killing these... Two people that are after him, right? That will that know he's the killer of his wife. Sure. And and the only way to do that is to ride the chariot at the two gladiators, right? And then pass it off as an accident. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's happening. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Do both our heroes die? Um. Does one of them die? That nobody so, has to die. Right, well... The, How, the do private, we want a happy the, resolution? You don't have well, to have a happy private, resolution. The private detective uh, is is run over right. by the by the stampeding horses. Okay. Yeah. Um, Stanley has thrown his st- trident yeah. at the... Because uh, he... he I mean, we could do that thing where to protect himself, he's hurled the trident. Maybe it can yeah. be what I suggested before, which is that it misses him, but it goes through the spoke of the wheel and then flips the car over. I'm going to stop suggesting things. Everything well, I suggest... Well, well, you well, hold on. Sorry. Um, can't he... I mean, is the bloke on the chariot clearly visible? I mean, his head is, right? Imagine, like, I'm here... Right. I'm holding the reins of the horses. Yeah, so he, he, and he's clearly there, visible. So, that, that so right, he, so Stanley throws the the trident yeah. at the head of the. Bloke. I'm just saying, do you want our nebbish postage yes, man of at do. the climax of, of this I movie do. in a 1950s yes. Ealing comedy yes. to decapitate? I mean, yes. all right, fair enough. Or the lady killers, they all fell yes. down, didn't they? Kind hearts and coronets. Yes. Alec Guinness died seven times. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So he. So we've gone back in time to change what? It's still exactly the same thing. He's still what? taking his head off. He's taking his head what, off. Ch- what changed? Well, in the last ten minutes that we discussed this, what changed? What do you mean? What's well, because we went back. We had him unkill the thing. We well, had all well, of this stuff. What was? Well, this happens. All right. The stuff happens. Okay. So he's taking his head off. All right. Right. So we rewound time just to do exactly the same thing again. He's taking his head off. Right. right? He's taking his head off. Good. And uh, his wife comes running out the audience and hurls her arms round Stanley and says, I love you. The wife... Of Stanley's wife. Oh, Stanley's wife. Because well, yeah. you were talking about the other one. I think no, his no. wife, who is no, no, meant no, to be no. dead, comes no, around. No, the... no, no, no. Right. No. I mean, that, that would be a twist ending. Yeah. Well, no, it's a happy ever after ending. You have just decapitated somebody on Ealing Common. Yeah. With not much evidence apart from the stuff that you stole. And now I love you. No. What what the thing is? She has seen if, Stanley. I think you're missing a scene, right? Mm. If you you can have no, you can have that. You can absolutely have that. But if it's then that he proves that it's the killer, 
and that he stopped the killer before he could kill again and saves his friend in the process in front of everybody. Well, 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 and then on the... Well, hold on a second. Hold right. on a second. So, basically, his wife has always loved him and uh, his wife has always loved him and uh, she she was just fed up with the fact he never did anything with his life. Right. And right? so now that he's decapitated yeah. somebody... That's She's it. Happy. Some people like flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Some people She's like chocolates. Happy. Some people like a head and, in a and, box. And then to, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. The, the thing is, is um, yeah. So, so she's happy with that. Okay. Right. So she's happy with that. And you said Did there was a scene missing. Well, only because right. I don't think him decapitating somebody in public without then a later explanation of that he gets his friend, the detective, isn't dead, provides the evidence, proves yeah, that this yeah, person yeah, no, was that's the killer. Fair enough. Point he then... Right, he's been trampled. He's... he's, he's <laughs> right. So the private detective yeah. has been trampled. Right, but it's very soft ground on, on Ealing yeah, Common. Yeah. He's just been pushed down in it a he bit. He's been trampled by the horses. Right. But although he's uh, badly injured... Yes, is going to live. Right. So, um, so, uh, so he's going to live and he can provide an explanation that this man is the killer. Right. That he's decapitated. And, and then with that, from being a murderer, it turns around that he is a hero who yes. was protecting innocence. Yes. And then when that happens, that, that, it just needed that step before yeah. the wife comes right. in and is then proud because he's split the reward money with his well, friend well, or whatever. Well, no, I mean, the wife... She, she, she's a simple she's woman. Just, she just got a hard on for murder. Is yeah. The... Now the th <laughs> thing is, she wanted him to do something with his life, and he, he has, has done something with his life. He has That's killed enough. a man he with a killed, trident. Killed a man, uh, but for the morally right purpose. Okay. And and she's happy that she's he's done something with his wife with, with his life. Right. And she's even happier. Because he's actually done the right thing. Okay. And good. and and so they have ever they have this letter. They take the letter to the police, and the police, you know, he gets a suspended. But the, sentence. you know, for the sake of the movie, the guy's got it under the the, the friend's got it underneath his chest plate. I yeah. he's sunk it in, yeah. and the horses yeah. are gone. Yeah. He provides that. You yeah. know, it, yeah. it, it, it's all done, right? right? Do you want to hear what the AI had for their finale? Yeah. I, I doubt it's going to be the same. Maximus and Sally come up with a plan to lure the killer into a trap. They pretend that Maximus is surrendering to him, and invite him to board the bus. They then use the coronation chicken as a weapon, throwing it at his face and blinding him. They also use some of the props from the Ealing comedies, such as a ladder, a bucket of paint, and a banana peel, to make him slip and fall. They finally manage to disarm the bomb and subdue the killer. I think they're confusing Ealing comedies with Keystone Cops, but apart from, from right, that, yeah. I guess they've, 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 they've tied yeah. it in yeah. uh, with all of that stuff. Not quite as satisfying, not as much of a lesson no. learned. I don't know how the, the growth of Maximus compares to the growth yeah. of Stanley. Yeah. But there we are. They, yeah. They've disarmed him with right. Coronation Chicken. Right. I suppose they made it a more integral part of the plot, but that, right. that's about it. Um, so we've got now just one last section, which is the final image, right? Final image. And so this is this is a bookend. This is the denouement. We remember what his normal life was back in the beginning. What is his life like now after the events of this whole? Um, he's back at home. Right. He's watching the telly. He's um, he's uh, watching the telly yeah. with a tin of coronation chicken. Yeah. And uh, with his feet up on on a on a buffet. Yeah. And 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 uh, his dog, uh, you know, in the background on oh, the sofa. But this time, his wife comes in and gives him a kiss in contrast yeah. to where it was earlier on. Yeah. And then maybe at the end, it's like, "Oi, get off your bum! We've got a case to do. I know you're not working as a postie anymore. You know, cop to it. You're working now as part of my detective agency." Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean. Um, well, no. I mean, <laughs> is he is he is he back as a postie then? No, um, he isn't. But he, it's just that. Um, I don't 
that's hard, isn't it? That's difficult. It's, it's difficult. Well, no, I'm, I mean... You don't, you don't have to have anything. Yeah, I no, just it, it just has a nice to be, no, no, that's too overcomplicated. No, it's, it's fine. He's there with his spirit. coronation chicken, his dog, yeah, and, a, and, and a kiss and, from his wife. Yeah, and the dog. Yeah. And, and, and the dog is, is, is... Oh, so and he's overcome his fear of dogs that he had from earlier from being a postman. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we are. <laughs> that's his growth. Oh, Jesus. That's why his, his wife loves him. Oh, all right, so Is that this, all right? yeah. yeah. Let's see for the the final image of the AI. There's one thing left afterwards, right? Maximus and Sally celebrate their victory and kiss. Maximus thanks Sally for saving his life and helping him adapt to the new world. He tells her that he wants to stay with her and start a new life in London. They drive away in the bus, happy and free. Yeah. So I guess he wanted to go back to his own time, and now he he doesn't. That was his flaw that he overcame. Right. right. So. The last thing is to come up with a title for this movie, okay, and a tagline. So I will tell you what the AI came up with. Right. I think you can probably come up with something maybe a little bit better. Um, I will help you if you want it, but I'd prefer for you to come up with it, okay? The AI titled their movie The Gladiator Bus. Right. And the tagline was, he's not here to fight, he's here to ride. Which is okay. Uh, roaming in the gloaming. Yep. Um, Roman ro- in the gloaming. Or Roman. Later uh, gladiator. Uh, uh, Carry on decapitating. Um, <laughs> um, roaming in the gloaming. See you later, gladiator. Yeah, see you later, Gladiator's fine. All right, good. So we've got the Gladiator bus versus see you later, Gladiator. Yeah. Um, and then you can have the, 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 the tagline of that is uh, Roman in the gloaming. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, so that's that's the, the podcast. Thank oh, sorry, what's the, what's the title? What's, I thought the title was Roman in the gloaming. Oh, and the, and the tagline is see you later, Gladiator. Uh, no, so the the... The title would be See You Later, Gladiator. Yes. And then we need a tagline. Yeah, which I sort of said Roman in the gloaming, if you if you like. Um, that'll do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, nothing says I love you like a trident to the neck. I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so that's it, uh, that John. That's hard work. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Just one last thing. Um, if you've got social media and stuff like that and yeah. people want to follow you, what, uh, what are you on? What do you mean? Uh, I'm on Facebook. Okay, right, oh, excellent. It. Okay, well, I'll put all of the in- things in the description. Uh, John is off, um, and I will see him later on for the headliner. If you want to join me and uh, John and uh, Free Acts every Saturday at the uh, Comedy Cat, please uh, come and see us. Until then, bye. Is that all right? It's great. Oh, that was hard work. It's I'm sorry. Hard. I mean, no. I mean, it was good. It was interesting. It was, it was, um, it was really interesting. 